Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Dice Kingdoms of Valeria by Daily Magic Games. This is a 1-4 to four player game that takes roughly about 30-45 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, you are going to be getting two sheets of paper. It's kind of like a roll and write. You'll be rolling dice, selecting certain die to gain certain rewards, and then using certain die or dice combinations to fill out your kingdom. Your objective? To score the most points of the, at the end of the game uh, more than any other player currently playing. And there's a variety of different ways you can go about this. Whether it is traversing your kingdom, or uh, increasing the amount of population that you have and impacting your guilds, uh, going on adventures uh, against certain monsters, as well as completing your castle and gaining gold. Each of the, these different paths are going to give you different ways of scoring points and filling out new little pips along the way. And basically, yes, whoever has the most stars, whoever has completed the most quests at the end is going to be the winner. I'll talk about the setup, how to play, and then of course our review. To begin the game, go ahead and determine how many players are playing. Each player is going to need a left and right hand side sheet. Tear off these from these little pamphlet booklets here and give one of each to each player. Then go ahead and assign a first player. That player is going to get the meeple and you'll just place it somewhere next to them. Go ahead and also take this deck of cards here. Now there are two different portions of the deck. There's the light deck and the dark deck. You'll shuffle each of them and place the light deck on top of the dark deck, place it down on the table, and then reveal six of the top of the deck face up, allowing players to be able to choose from these in an array. Go ahead and set aside the solo cards, unless you're playing solo, and give each player a rewards tip slash on your turn reference card. The dice themselves, there are four different colored dice, as well as two numerical black die. Set those within reach of all players. And then you're ready to go. The game plays out in rounds, and in each round, one player will be rolling all these dice. A round is going to consist of phases, the roll phase, the harvest phase, the action phase, and then finally passing the dice and doing this once again. And it'll continue this way up until somebody has filled out three of the guilds on their first left-hand side mat. There are four total guilds, and each has a symbol, and once three of them have been filled, the round will end with everybody getting equal turns. To begin, you're going to start with the roll phase, and you'll use this little card here that explains the on your turn and what you do during the phases. The roll phase is quite simple. You'll take the black die, you will take the four different colored die, and you will roll them. Once you have rolled them, you'll set aside the colored dice based on whatever they rolled on, and you'll set aside the two black dice. And then you're going to check to see the each of the different die, as well as the combined total of both die. So if I roll a 5 and a 6, I'm going to be rolling a 5, 6, and an 11. From there is the harvest phase, where everybody is going to harvest whatever those black die rolled. So not only the player that rolled them, but also everybody else. And you'll determine what you harvest based on this top portion of the left-hand game board. You'll see these little yellow indicated banners here. And we start with a 5 and a 6, which is actually wonderful. It means everybody is going to harvest one from the 5 and one from the 6. And how you harvest is you're going to be marking down the pips on your guild area from top to bottom, left to right. So you're always going to be going up and then across and then down one and across and then down one and across. And you'll keep doing that. And you'll, you'll harvest a five and a six. The five is going to be a hammer, which is for the workers, I believe. And the six is the soldiers, which is the helmet. And you'll just mark in each of those pips based on the order I explained, top to bottom, left to right. And if you ever mark a pip that is anything other than a black circle, you will do what it says. And luckily you can check on the back of your card here and it will determine what you can do. Like for instance, if you mark a citizen space, you're going to be able to mark another citizen in the harvest area. If you get a circle that is gold, you'll be marking a gold, which is in the gold area over here. If you mark a square that is green, you'll be able to go on an adventure. You'll mark one of these pips up here, following from the top area of the filled pips in, going downward. And you'll be going, whenever you fill one in, you'll be able to only continue from where you previously filled in. You could fill in a blue soldier, which will allow you to go across the wall here. This is the only one that breaks the rule. You'll go from left to right, and then from bottom to top. Uh, if you fill in a shield, you'll be able to go and fight monsters. And you go ahead and go on the bottom of the screen and go from left to right, top to bottom, left to right. And then if you manage to get a statue, that is what is going to let you get these cards here. These cards are basically bonus objectives and bonus points you can gain at the end of the game, whether it be one victory point for every domain you conquer in the exploration phase. And then finally, the 
purple stars. Purple stars are basically victory points that you can gain. Um, and you just, you basically just fill them in and at the end of the game, you'll calculate them. So after everybody has rolled these numbers, five, six, you will check and you will see, okay, I've got a five and a six, but I don't have an 11. So I'll fill out those and then it's the player's turn to take an action. Now an action is pretty interesting. You'll have three different actions in the game and you can look on your little card here and it'll explain what each of them do. The first one is recruit, which is the yellow die here. Uh, you can go ahead and fill out the number of the yellow die uh, for your recruit action. So if you want the soldier, which is a six, you can fill out that. If you get a three, you'll fill out the three on the, on the, on the space or a one, etc. The next action is slay. You can go ahead and look at the monster chart on the bottom of the uh, both, both dockets here, and you'll fill it in uh, based on what your red die is. So if it requires a one through six and you roll a three, you'll be able to fill that in. If you require a nine specifically, you can fill that area in and each of the portions are separated. Then you have the green one. The green one is your exploration. This one's a little different. If you roll a two on exploration, you can actually mark up to two pips going down the track. And remember, you're always going to start from the top of any of these four areas and you'll just mark it down. If you ever get to a big circle, that's where you stop. Your turn is going to end there. You cannot continue moving forward and you can't space them out. You have to go from one path, use it all the way, uh, all the way down. And then once you hit that next space, you can then choose a new area. Uh, in the beginning of, the year of, of when you choose to do this action, you can choose which area you'd like to go and start from. And each of the little domains will give you a bonus action you can take on your turn once a turn. Um, and all three of those are the actions you can choose. But you ask, what is the blue die for? Well, the blue die is actually pretty cool. If you want, you can add any of the action dice that you've selected with the blue die's pips. So for instance, if I got a two for green, I can add my four blue and it gives me six exploration instead of just two. Or if I don't want the six recruit, I can actually add the four to this and then I can get the 10 recruit instead. And so on and so forth with the monster as well. After I've chosen one of these three actions, I will then pass my dice and the next player is gonna get their chance to go. They're going to then roll these dice here and everybody is going to harvest. I roll a five and a three. So I'll check to see if I have a three. I'll check to see if I have a five and I'll check to see if I have an eight because you add them together. And then I'll mark the pips down based on what I got. If for any reason I don't have anything that the dice have rolled, maybe I don't have a three, maybe I don't have a four, maybe I don't have a seven for instance, I can mark any one pip of my choosing. So whenever you roll and you do not get anything, you're guaranteed at least one thing. And that's basically the idea of the game. You'll progress as you gain more recruits. More recruits will give you more harvests. Harvests are going to then generate you more actions. And then actions that you can just simply utilize will let you choose between the three different areas in which you can go through, whether it be recruiting more guys, going in exploration, or going and fighting monsters. Fighting monsters is pretty cool. If you finish the track before anybody else, you'll score the upper portion of points and nobody else can. Everybody else will get the bottom portion. Each monster is going to have a number of these purple star tip pips, which are going to score them additional points. And also they'll each give you a recruit action, except for the last one, which just gives you tons of points. And the domains are pretty cool as well. They give you a variety of things, whether it be including a pip for each of the main dice or being able to flip them, giving you one of each of the different types of citizens and so on and so forth. But yeah, it's a basic style roll and write with an adventure sub theme. And of course, being able to choose between three different things that you can do, whether it be recruiting more people into your kingdom and completing quests to fight monsters or just exploring the area around you. And of course, don't forget the game is gonna end when three of the recruit areas, these little guild areas have been completely filled in. In which case, like I said, the game is over when the round is over and all players have had equal turns. In which case, you'll start scoring. You'll score points for each of your purple stars. You'll score one point for each domain that you've acquired on um, this little area here. You will score points for each monster you've defeated, whether it's the top portion for being first or the bottom portion. And then you'll score points for your little statues. These guys here uh, will you'll, we'll score bonus points and you can get up to four of these guys. So you can get one point for every domain, uh, two points for every citizen that you have that's a builder. You can get uh, three points for every specific citizen that's a spy, etc., etc. Add up all those points. Whoever has the most is the winner in the game Dice Kingdoms of Valeria.
Okay, my review. At first when I started playing this game, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, but then I caught the like Machi Koro space-based type sub-theme in the game. Uh, recruiting guys allows you to basically harvest and like gain stuff for your main for, for guild areas. And each of these will give you bonuses. And depending on which ones you choose, uh, will give you certain types of bonuses. The builders are gonna be able to let you explore more. The soldiers will let you fight more on this wall area here. Uh, the, like, I guess they're like spies or assassins are going to give you a variety of things and then of the, the i believe these like the, the eagles like they're like royals or whatever are going to give you a bunch of gold and uh based on what you've recruited from the dice is going to give you more variety now of course you're always going to get at least to fill in one thing but you want to fill in at least two if not three and also there's this cool thing where if you filled in like you start with a five that's filled in here if you get another five that you recruited, you're gonna fill in the next bubble, which can also give you bonus pips as well. But whenever a five gets rolled, you'll actually get two in that guild area. So you can get a total of up to two for each of the different numbers. So you can actually fill in six if you're very, very lucky when it comes to a harvest phase. And rolling doubles will amount to the same thing. If I rolled two fives and both pips were filled in, I get to take four into the number five, which is the builder. So I'd fill in four total ones there. I also like this game because it's kind of like a, com a wombo combo type game. Maybe I just filled in this five, which gave me this little square that's a green. Oh, and great, I, my green got me the ability to get one of these little soldiers. So I go to the wall and I fill that in, and oh look, I've gotten a shield, which allows me to finish one of these monsters, <laughs> which gave me a green to go back to here. And so there can be little triggers that will let you continue progressing throughout this game. And you can do a little of everything in the game. You can specifically focus on one or two different types of guilds. Uh, you can focus on monster slang. It's really all up to you. And the, the scores are always gonna be vastly, um, well, not vastly, they're always going to be relatively close to each other, so it always feels like a tight-knit game, and your actions will make a big difference as to your uh, as to what's going to possibly happen. However, there is luck as well. Sometimes the dice are always going to roll for everybody else and not for you. It's possible. It's got that Machi Koro type space based thing, but basically, you have to kind of mitigate the luck by choosing how much you want to recruit because recruiting matters in this game. If you don't fill enough these bubbles in and you're just simply trying to do the adventures and all that other stuff, it can bite you in the butt. I always recommend that to begin with, start by recruiting at least one or two other numbers because this is gonna pop up on everybody else's turn and this is how you're gonna get extra bonus actions. Uh, these cards are super useful as well when you can pick them up, the little pillar cards. You definitely should because these guys can grant you bonus powers, they can give you bonus victory points. There's a variety of cards and as you dig in, you'll start finding the knight cards which will start giving you even more value, um, but digging them is quite difficult. Um, and while the game has kind of a unique portion to each of it and how it functions. It all kind of works and intertwines together. I love that actions can be gained from the adventure area. And then you have the area of the wall that will secure you victory points at the end of the game in addition to letting you fight monsters, which are generally speaking just an action you can take from the dice. And then you can kind of fight for who's going to defeat what monster first and how dangerous kind of push your luck you want to get. Do you want to actually try and beat this last monster? It might be the only one that you ever get, but it is 11 points. But if you don't get first, you're going to get nine instead. All of this kind of plays a little role in the game and choice is, is phenomenal. Being able to kind of pick and choose where you want to go and hopefully what the dice roll is a little bit of luck, a little bit of like organizing your luck and then your option of actions. The artwork is wonderful, stunning, just like every other uh, Valeria game. All the other Daily Magic games have kind of similar artwork style, and I like it in this one as well. I love the cards and their ability to allow you to gain additional points and kind of work with whatever objective you're working with. And it all feels well-rounded. Uh, it's all quite simple once you understand. Maybe you, after you go through one or two rounds of the game, you start to know what you're doing. The only complexity of this is you have to remember that when you fill something in, usually you must fill something else in. And sometimes people will just kind of brush along and maybe forget one or two things. And because of that, you always have to do it in kind of this like, fill this first in, and now I'll go over here and do this. Great, that's done, nothing else. Okay, now I'll go back to this and I'll do this. And so there's kind of a bit of maintenance that goes into the game. If you're not careful, you can kind of mess yourself up and hurt yourself. It is very solitaire-ish in which you cannot actually mess with your opponents in any way or harm them in any way, except for one way. You can get to the monsters and beat them first. But otherwise, it's pretty much you're on your own. And basically, whoever does the best with their skill management plus the 
how the dice roll in the harvest phase is gonna determine who the winner is. It's a light, it's fun, it's quick, it's easy, and you can take it anywhere. This is definitely a strong suggestion for me. Um, I didn't originally like a lot of rolling whites years ago, but as I progressively like seen the different types of games that they, they've had, and there's like a whole variety of them, I found my niche of which ones I like. I love the adventure ones. I love the ones where I get to go exploring, and it's simplistic enough to where I can have everybody play along with me. I really wish this game had a little bit more interaction with the other players, but but otherwise, it's really, really fun. It's really enjoyable and it's very straightforward. If you're a Roll and Write fan, this is one I definitely, definitely recommend for you to play. It has that solo player variant and you can play up to four players, which is my preferred way of playing the game because it's always fun to watch what everybody else is doing in the game. Yes, Dice Kingdoms of Valeria is a solid pickup in my opinion. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dice Kingdoms of Valeria. If you're interested in picking up this roll and write, there's a link down below in the description where you can do so. If you think we've earned your subscription, if you watch more than one or two of our videos here, you can go ahead and hit that, that subscribe button. There's a subscribe button and then maybe a bell if you would like as well. It'll notify you when we do more content like this one here. As well as our live streams every Wednesday and Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, Wednesdays is whatnot, and Sunday is on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And you can watch on any of these three platforms where you can see us play games just like this one here. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for what I got for you today. And as always, I look forward to venturing into the Dice Kingdoms of Valeria with you next time.